Nebraska. They get a commitment, another transfer portal commitment from Stefan Thompson. All right. 6'1, 248 pounds. Now, he's played in 36 career games. He has 169 career tackles, 20 TFLs. And he actually earned a starting job as a true freshman in, 20, in 2020, okay, as well. And he's a guy uh, in Tony White's system and for Tony White. And he's a guy who has multiple years of eligibility left, potentially a multi-year starter in the middle of this 3-3-5 black shirts, Tony White defense now, this is a guy who had offers from other schools as well you know some of them would have been arizona state kansas state etc so this is a guy who's a potential starter in the middle of this defense he's familiar with how this defense works how it operates the expectations from the head man of this defense okay a guy who can come in and potentially be an impact player on defense here at nebraska starter okay another recent commitment I love the fact that we have so many young, talented, athletic, speedy receivers, but the lack of guys who are proven at that position, okay, is not a small number. The lack of guys with a lot of talent at that position is not a small number. What's nice is that the Huskers, okay, in the past week or so, have brought in veteran receivers, okay? Jamal Banks. Former Wake Forest wide receiver, 6'4", 205. Okay, he's another vet wide receiver. Isaiah Nair from Texas joined a few days before Jamal did. Okay, this is a guy for two straight years, has had over 600 yards receiving. Probably the most statistically accomplished player of any of the guys who've committed recently. Okay, via the transfer portal in his four years with the Demon Deacons, he had 107 catches, 1,404 yards, 13 TDs, and 44 games. Last year, 59 catches, 653 yards, and four TDs. He has one year of eligibility left due to the COVID rules. Okay, these super seniors and super duper seniors and all that, we're going to benefit from it too. Okay, and he also was being courted by teams such as Notre Dame, Wisconsin, Minnesota, Purdue. And Michigan. So you look at the quarterback room, you got two true freshmen, you got Harburg. Okay, that competition is wide open. And Harburg won what five games for us last year, five or six. So the combined amount of total starting experience in that in that quarterback room is what about five or six games. So some veteran receivers, I think is big, big bodies. Okay. As we know, speedy guys are awesome because they can get you that that big play. They can take a 20-yard catch and turn it into an 80-yard catch. They can take a one-yard catch and turn it into a 50-yard catch, a touchdown catch. But when you got a young quarterback who is going to be learning an offense, trying to make decisions, trying to make decisions fast, regardless of who it is back there, we don't have anybody who has even a full season of starting quarterback experience, a big body target, whether it's a tight end, Thomas Fedoni, whether it's receivers, Jamal, Isaiah, otherwise. I mean, Malika has got a big body as well. Obviously, a lot of speed. Young guy learning. Got to start some games last year. Malachi Coleman. Okay. Sometimes being able, if you're a young quarterback who may be having a hard time with guys trying to rip his face off and wear it on Halloween because they're blitzing the house because, well, you're young and they're trying to take advantage of that. Knowing that you got a big bodied guy with really good hands out there and you kind of just trust him to make those challenging catches, even if you may not be making the quickest, most proper reads just yet, especially at the start of the season, that can be immensely helpful. Okay. And it's interesting because Jamal Banks seems to be, when it comes to a guy like Dylan Riola specifically, seems to be excited about catching some balls from him. He said, and I quote, I haven't seen anybody warm up like him. Maybe Sam Hartman at Wake how quickly he gets depth and his arm strength, end quote. They, they threw the ball around a little bit, if you couldn't tell. Okay, him and Dylan. And so he seems excited to be catching the ball from a guy like Dylan, whether it's Daniel, whether it's Harburg, but he was talking about Riola specifically right there. So I think those are some – it's funny, when they, when they had all five of these guys come, okay, 
and there was uh, another linebacker, X Alexander, who who the Huskers have moved on from since. Okay, and obviously they got a commitment from Dante Dodwell, the running back, a guy who's immediately going to challenge for playtime and or a starting spot. Insanely loaded running back room. Holy Moses Malone, when you think about the veterans in there, Gabe Irvin, Ramir Johnson, when you think about the young guys, Quentin Ives, who Matt Rule has brought up in press conferences. I know he hasn't played a ton yet. He's brought him up no less than three or four times, which is a lot for a guy who hasn't played much. And then you got, I don't know, the guy who was our best running back last year, Emmett Johnson, who's a young guy, a guy who you can see why he was highly thought of coming out of high school. I thought he did a good job. You can see once he gets in the weight room, a smidge thin. Young guy, freshman, a smidge thin. He gets in that weight room, he's only going to get better and better. And then you add a guy like Dante into that mix, that's five really good, talented running backs. Okay, Gabe has started here. Emmett has started here. Ramir has started here. A lot of people are talking about how Dante could start here. Matt Rule brings up Quentin Ives. You know, I mean, I don't, want, I don't like putting things into the atmosphere. I'm not a big, uh, you know, jinx guy, or I'm not a big uh, superstitious type guy. The only superstition I've ever really had it wasn't superstition. I just, I really liked these socks in high school. I wore them every game in football. By the time I was a senior, they had holes all over the place. I don't know how I didn't get blisters. And then I just wore them in basketball my senior year of high school as well. Just, just, I don't know, I wanted to. Made no real logical sense. My toes were hanging out. You could see they went up to my, they were the old, old school. They were kind of cool back in the day. The high socks that went just below the knee. You could see the holes like in the back of my calf. There was holes in the toes. So I'm not a big superstitious guy, but what I'm getting at is when you got that many backs in a running back room, okay, in this day and age of the transfer portal, you know, the odds are somebody leaves. I hope not, but the odds are that might happen, but it's okay if that does because there's a whole bunch of running backs in there that are going to be fighting for play time. Guys with a lot of talent, guys with experience. So we'll see what happens there. But of the five visitors, transfer portal visitors that were in a little over a week ago or just short of a week ago, they got four of them, okay? That's, that's a pretty good percentage. Coaches are doing pretty good with the guys that they're targeting in the transfer portal. And I remember thinking, man, if we could get Jamal and Isaiah, that'd be, that'd be pretty sweet. Well, we got them. You know, with, with Dante Dadwell, I was like, you know, I mean, we don't really need him. I just spoke about the loaded running back room. But shoot, if the guy's interested, a guy with that much ability and size and strength and power and ability to break tackles and get yards, I mean, he's the equivalent of a Big Ten back with great explosiveness. Sure, why not? Oh, by the way, got him too. Okay, and then we got a surprise earlier this week, at least to me. By the way, this guy has a phenomenal name. I always thought Thunder Collins had a phenomenal name for a football player. Okay, I had a strength coach in Nebraska named Rock Gullickson. Phenomenal strength coach name. All right, this, this guy's name is Micah Mazuka, and it just sounds like bazooka to me. And it's just like, what a, what a great sounding name for an offensive lineman, just exploding off the ball and blowing up defenders. All right, Nebraska's O-line just got bigger and better. Micah Mazuka, I just, I just might dub him Bazooka. I don't know. Announced today that he'll be transferring to us. This is my, I'm actually reading my own tweet from a few days ago. Just so you know, I'm, this is Adam Carricker's tweet. If you got nothing better to do with your life, you can follow me on Facebook, the Twitter. Uh, you can on Instagram. I haven't posted in about 14 years. Maybe I should start doing that. But anyways, Micah announced that he'll be transferring to us. He started 10 plus games each of the last two years for Florida and Baylor in 2023 of Florida. Okay, by the way, six foot five, anywhere from 335 to 325, depend on where you look to see what he's listed. He started at right guard in 11 to 12 games, had 743 snaps in 2022 at Baylor. Played at 11 games, had 10 starts, and graded out as the second best guard in the Big 12 conference, according to the pro, to pro football focus, and the 42nd best guard in the nation. Now, when it comes to run blocking specifically, when a guy's 6'5", 330-esque-ish, this isn't surprising, okay? At run blocking specifically, he graded as the best in the conference, the entire Big 12 conference, and the 15th best in the nation. Now, if you watch this guy on film, 
Pass pro may not be his strength, okay? Your strength can really only be, you know, one thing typically, all right? But run blocking, and I'm, I'm not saying he's some big liability of pass protection. I'm saying his strength is run blocking. Matt Rule wants to run the ball. He wants to be fig, be big, physical. I combined physical and big into fig. He wants to be big. He wants to be physical. He wants to have maulers up front. This guy's got a bit of a nasty streak, too. So this is a guy that that can potentially come in and start for us day one. You talk about Isaiah. You talk about Jamal. You talk about Mazuka Bazooka. I mean, these are guys with veteran experience, okay? And these are guys, uh, at least, you know, I mean, Isaiah started, made big plays at Wyoming. They all have starting experience. Jamal at Wake Forest, okay? Mazuka Bazooka, Florida, Baylor started at two different power five schools prior to Nebraska. These are guys who can immediately come in and make us better right off the bat, compete, earn a starting job. Potentially. I think that's kind of the idea when you bring in guys like these. So when you look at the transfer portal and the targets that Nebraska has had, he almost committed to Nebraska a year ago. Um, so he was almost a Husker a year ago. The offensive line improved as the season went along last year. Okay. Still needs a lot of improvement. And this is a guy that can come in and help fill at least one potential hole on that offensive line, or at least be an upgrade on that offensive line as well. So for me, this off season has been exciting so far, not just because there's a lot of stuff to talk about just in general. It's exciting so far because when you look at what Matt rule and his staff are doing, like I legit believe they are doing a very good job at talent acquisition, okay? 19th recruiting class in the country. They brought in, they had more signees than any other team in the entire country in their high school recruiting class because because he believes in developing players, okay? And then you look at what they're doing in the transfer portal. Have they brought in 15, 20 guys? Nope. They brought in almost 30 high school guys and they want to develop. But where do we need help at? We need experienced receivers. Bam, got two of them. We need some size and big body targets for our young quarterbacks. Bam, got a couple of them. We need to help improve the offensive line even more. Bam, let's bring in Mazuka Bazooka. And then, oh, by the way, we may need to replace some guys in the middle on the defense, some guys with experience in the 3-3-5 def- defense. Bam, just did that as well. Now, I'm not sitting here saying we're, we're going to go like 15-0. That would be asinine. What I am saying – is it is it too early to start drinking the Kool-Aid? Red is my favorite. I'm just saying it's been a good offseason so far.